She's my old sparring partner going head to head in the Commons over my former job. Shadow Culture Secretary Lucy Powell joins me now from Manchester. Welcome, Lucy. You're the first Hi, Labour MP brave enough to come on my show, so you're very welcome. Lovely to see you. And you, Nadine. You're looking gorgeous as oh, ever. Right. You too, Lucy. <laughs> see, great. We start with compliments. <laughs> this is how uh, we, we, were, we were always quite we were always quite sisterly, weren't we? Even though we sparred at the dispatch box, you yeah, were always very Lucy. generous to me. So. Lucy, it's just been pointed out to me that you were really mean about me in interviews. The things I you thought really I didn't mean see, you, Lucy. No, I wasn't really mean about you in interviews. It's just the journalists always like those lines, didn't they? So they always got promoted higher up in the in the piece. It was like a throwaway thing. But anyway, I'm sorry. No, I could only apologise. Oh well, that's very sweet of you because I always liked you. I was very hurt. So, um, oh, but I'm thank so you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... No, and do you know what, actually, when it was one of those articles that did have a horrible headline about you, I particularly felt bad because, you know, I don't want to see pylons and trolling and all the sort of social media grief that you sometimes got, that we all get, but, you, you know, you particularly got. And, uh, and I felt really bad that, I, oh. you know, I didn't want you to sort of be the target of that. So I do, do genuinely apologise for that. Oh, Lucy, that's so lovely of you. Thank you. But, you know, I was going to talk about online safety in a minute, but that yeah. actually brings us on to something else because, you know, I've said this week I would never ask a woman to stand for Parliament because it's very different today from what it was when I came into politics a long time ago now, admittedly. But, you know, the comments that Rosie Duffield made about feeling as though she's in an abusive relationship in Labour and, and there was something else she said, you know, she's just not very well loved within the party. Do you feel that, that, that kindness that you've just shown me, that maybe we should be showing it to our colleagues in Westminster because not a lot of people realise what female MPs do go through in terms of what you just described as the, the trying and the abuse it's actually getting quite serious. Don't we need to support each other? We do, definitely. And I saw your um, comments in, in The Times and I can relate to those. You know, I do think that the decisions for, for women, you know, are getting harder because we, we not just we're subject to it, but I think we perhaps we feel it more because we worry about the impact of that, not so much on ourselves. You know, you, you and me are made of sort of sterner stuff, but... You know, our kids reading those things, our loved ones reading those things, the security issues as well. And obviously we've seen what's happened with the tragic murder of, of two MPs as well. You know, I do think that, that on top of all the previous things that women used to consider as well, like juggling family life, but as well as being an MP, you know, constantly questioning, are you good enough? You know, something that men often don't question quite in the same way. On top of all that, yes, the kind of abuse, the uh, sometimes offline as well as online, the security issues and all of those things. I do think it makes it harder for women to choose to go uh, in, into politics. And, and we should be more sisterly and we should be more kind to one another and be mindful that sometimes our comments, even if they're seen as sort of political um, banter, you know, can cause some of that hurt onto other people as well. Because this is saying, isn't that it's all fair in, in war and politics. But I think that saying needs to kind of be reviewed now in terms of, you know, we were talking about the benefits of the, of the tech age, but actually the disadvantages come with that too, particularly for people in public life. Katie, what do you think? I just wondered on that, Lucy. I mean, Nadine mentioned Rosie Duffield. You do have a female colleague in the Labour Party who has said a few times now, they don't feel as though they are getting much support from the Labour leadership on really tricky issues. Do you think Keir Starmer should be reaching out more to Rosie Duffield? Well, I think he has reached out to, to Rosie. Obviously, I'm not sort of party to their particular, um, you know, relationship. I mean, Rosie has very sort of strident views on, on one side of, of an argument. And I think, you know, to the broader point that we're, that we're talking about, we should be able to, to disagree kindly uh, on those kind of issues. I wouldn't want Rosie or anybody else to feel ostracised uh, in the Labour Party or indeed you know, in politics for the views that they hold. You know, Nadine and I, we disagree on, on quite a few things. We agreed on some things, we disagreed on quite a few things. But I don't think that means that I, I don't respect Nadine. I do respect Nadine. I respect 
Uh, she, her opinions, I respect that her drive and her determination and all of those things that she brought to politics, even though we disagreed on issues. So I think, you know, we have to sort of separate the personal from the political more. And I wouldn't want to see someone feeling they were ostracised or unsupported, even if I didn't necessarily share their views on, on, on a particular topic. So... Lizzie, can we just move on to the online safety bill? Because you and I are not a million miles apart from this. And I'm really disappointed in my government for, well, the government, for dropping the what was called legal but harmful, which actually was just misnamed. It should never have been called that. So what that covered was not just children, but those adults who were also vulnerable. And by dropping that part of the bill, the protections that were in place for those adults has gone. It leaves the door open for racist comments. The bill in, its, in the form that I got it to when we first brought it to the House actually dealt with all that and now it doesn't anymore. Is, and, and I know you spoke out about this, Lucy, in the final readings. Are you going to continue when the amendments come back from the Lords? Because I know they're concerned in the Lords about this. Are you going to support amendments to, to try and bring back those protections for vulnerable adults? and particularly on racism? Absolutely, uh, Nadine. And, you know, I completely agree with you. And I think you know, one of the reasons I, I, I wanted to come on this show is because, you know, you did actually, you, you grasped the nettle with that bill um, before you were appointed. It had been hovering around for years and years and years. You were determined to get it through. You, you saw off you know, various sort of arguments and, and potential rebellions about some of these issues. And you were absolutely right that the original core purpose of that bill was not just about dealing with um, harms directly to children or indeed just dealing with things that in the online world are quite, uh, sorry, the offline world are quite clearly illegal. But it was about the nature of the platforms, wasn't it? And about what happens on social media that individual posts themselves might not be illegal, but they can cause a great deal of harm, especially when the algorithms get to work, the engagement algorithms, and, and you are rewarded on social media platforms because of those engagement algorithms. You're actually rewarded for sensational, hateful, uh, misinformed uh, views because they're more controversial and they, they generate engagement. And your bill, when you left office, uh, you know, had all of those sort of broad measures in that would have tackled issues like Andrew Tate and his misogyny, would have tackled issues like racism to, to footballers, anti-Semitism, some of these issues that we see go viral uh, online. And it has been massively watered down in your absence, I'm afraid to say. And yes, we will stand firm. It's had its second reading in the Lords. We're hoping to see some amendments that that broaden and strengthen the bill to cover more of those areas. And we will do what we can to, to get those passed to the Commons. And I actually think that a number of your colleagues, a, a broad breadth of your colleagues, not just from one particular sort of part of the Conservative Party, would, would support a strengthening for the still of that bill, don't you think? Absolutely. Well, well we, you know, I did my homework before we took the bill to the House and I made sure that we had the votes and all the contentious issues have been dealt with so it was incredibly disappointing for me. Lucy, moving on to something entirely different. Um, Andrew Rayner made some interesting comments this week regarding trans issues. And um, do you agree with her on the points that she made? Well, look, I think these issues are sort of, you know, difficult on the face of it. But I, I'm a feminist. I'm a woman. You know, I have fought my whole life for equality for women and for women's rights. And we're still a long way off that you know when someone asks me what defines a woman well i'll say somebody who earns less money for doing the same job uh who still does the vast majority of, of care at home and who still faces barriers to success in their in their lives and those issues are as true today as they uh, ever were and i i'm sort of uncompromising about that but i also support uh there's a, it's a very small number of people, but there are a small number of people who uh, feel that they've been born into the wrong uh, body and whose whole life is defined by, um, by that and, and are often very abused and are subject to a huge amount of abuse and anxiety and mental health uh, stress. And I've got a number of constituents that I've supported over the years. And, and I support 
uh, them in in their right to be who they want to be. Um, well, it's listen. a bit like the arguments that we had back in the eighties. So, you know, I think I think there is a, a a place here where we can all come together if if everybody is prepared to to put aside some prejudices at the door and some thinking at the door and come together on some of these issues. But in relation to people in prisons, you know, clearly anyone who's a threat to a, a woman shouldn't be in a woman's prison. Um, you know, I don't I don't really care for, for what they want to identify themselves as in those circumstances. They shouldn't be in a woman's prison. And that's pretty clear in the Equalities Act that they shouldn't be in that in that place. Exactly. And, you know, I, I, I echo your your thoughts about anybody who feels, you know, genuinely that they found themselves in the wrong body and they do suffer with serious mental health issues as a result. Those people should have all our love and support. But, you know, when it comes to actually self-ID and, and accessing those safe spaces that women, women have a right to, I think, and particularly in prison, then, then there is no place for someone with a penis in a woman's prison. I think it's pretty cut and dried. So, Lucy, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Queen Consort Camilla today has joined the Roald Dahl argument about publishers who are rewriting his publishers, who are rewriting parts of his text. So, I'm an author. I, I know a little bit about publishing industry, and I'm actually really appalled by what they're doing. And I know, Lucy, you support the, uh, the government's position on retain and explain on statues and not ripping down statues. Do you think this is going too far? It's, well, I do. I do actually. I don't think it's the, the right thing to do. Look, when literature was written, it, it, it's of its time, isn't it? However, of its time, that might not uh, be in, in a modern context. You know, we, we, we don't sort of rewrite Dickens or, or Shakespeare or, or edit those things because they're of their time. And I think Roald Dahl books, which I grew up on uh, reading, um, haven't. I don't think they've made made me a fattest or whatever um person that that are, are you know is of is of the eight is of the 70s of the 80s of the time that that children's literature was was being written and it doesn't necessarily translate very well to kind of modern taste but then people have got lots of other things they could read if they would prefer not to so i don't so, think we should be postscript sort of editing uh novels and fiction from from the past personally. so lucy no. you said that you don't like the word woke do you stick by that I don't like the word woke. I mean, it's had many different manifestations over the years. Look, but I, I'm a northerner like you, Nadine. A, a sort of spade's a spade, isn't it, in our neck of the woods? Um, so if someone wants to call me woke, then I'm woke. But I wouldn't define myself <laughs> as, as woke or, or anti-woke. I just think I'm sort of fairly ordinary, really. 